Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. There's an exhibit at the Museum of the City of New York called Facing Fascism, New York and the Spanish Civil War. Sarah Henry and Tom Millens are the curators who organized the show, and they're here today to talk about it. I'm so glad you're here. First of all, let me just ask, is, an ex is it an exhibit? Can you interchange the word exhibit and show? Well, we do it colloquially at the museum, yeah. uh, and I think it's a show in the sense that we show right. things. It's a production, uh, basically. It's a production, and it feels like that behind the scenes a yeah. lot of the time. And if, But of course, it's different because what we're presenting is an interpretation. It's a learning experience. It's hopefully enjoyable and entertaining as so, well. So, but I wouldn't be scoffed at in a gathering we of can use that word. curators. We no, can use that word fine. It's safe. fine. Now, the next Exhibition, question though. is, what's a curator do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, now, Sarah, you're the chief, I'm curator, chief curator and the deputy director of the museum. That's right. right. So I do administration and curating. Oh boy, and work you got with the all budget. The, <laughs> I, I got the budget responsibilities. Right. And Tom does special ex exhibitions. Exactly right. Okay. Yeah. So now tell us what a curator does. <laughs> Well, the, so the curator conceptualizes the content of the show, does the research, and, and most importantly, I think, goes out and finds the visual material that you're going to use to present it. Because an exhibition isn't a book on a wall. Right. Uh, it's in the case like a, it's the one. It's three dimensional. It's three dimensional, yeah. and it's fundamentally a, a visual learning experience. So it's really, to me, the the exciting and challenging thing about it is working to bring the the stories and the interpretation that you want to tell the audience about, bringing them together with the visual material that that can document it. But I just looked at mm -hmm. the range of exhibitions mm -hmm. that you have and the range of shows yeah. you've curated. Mm -hmm. right, right. But you don't know everything about all those topics, do you? Well, one of the really fun <laughs> things about our jobs mm -hmm. is that we get to uh, immerse ourselves in these subjects and mm -hmm. learn more about them. And we have some connection and familiarity with the subjects at, at the outset, for the most part, <laughs> but, but then it, it, it's really uh, an exciting experience to uh, Because each time learn you're learning more about, about the whole thing. Yeah. And, and the mission of the Museum of the City of New York is right in the name of the right. museum. And think about so. New York City and all the stories there are to tell and all the important issues that are raised. So we have a, an incredibly broad canvas and there's no person who could be the expert on all of those. So we mm -hmm. get to work with uh, scholars and content mm -hmm. experts. We have advisory committees. But for me, the exciting thing is I get to go from working on Black Style Now, which was about hip hop culture and <laughs> fashion, uh, to working on Robert Moses, and then uh, we're opening a show in June on baseball in New York, 1947 <laughs> to 1957, all within the you under don't the umbrella. You look like a hip hop fan. I'm not, a, it, it, but, but now I like it. Never judge a cover now, by it. <laughs> 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 it's never. Yeah, I get to learn. I get to learn yeah. about everything, and. Uh, yeah, and that's what I love about New York City, and that's why I love so working at the Museum in the City of New York. Yeah. Well, have you been curate? Have you curated at other places? Yes, uh, and I, I continue to curate mm -hmm. at other places: the uh -huh. National Building Museum in Washington mm -hmm. and the Center for Architecture. Mm -hmm. um, but um, working with the Museum in the City of New York, I uh, we're always connecting the material back to New York. So that's the through line for us, mm -hmm. and and to try to present the story in a way that illuminates the audience's understanding of New York, right. not just of the particular right. subject. Right, Did right. you decide you wanted to be cur uh, curators when you were young, or at college even? Uh, for me, one thing led like to another. And, and you're, a, you're an architectural historian? Yes, I have a background in, in that field and in writing about New York. And a and master's degree from City University. That's true. From Hunter <laughs> College. That's right? true. And then uh, I, I uh, made the transition from writing about uh, the city to presenting exhibits about it. But as Sarah said, they're actually very different mm -hmm. challenges. Yeah. An exhibit is not just a book on the wall. Right. You have a limited number of, of words that you can expect anyone to read standing up in a public place, and you really need to uh, tell the story in a physical way through artifacts. I am a historian by training, so I have a uh. PhD in history. I was an academic historian. I made the transition to doing public history, and That's I never thought of working in a museum, and I have no idea why. Because That's once it came to be, it yeah. was like the light went off. I, why did I never think of this before? Because actually I was inspired to become a historian by an experience at a museum. Oh, that's so interesting. And I was always a museum goer. As a child, I grew up in New York and went to every museum. My grandmother took me every Saturday. I don't know why I never connected the dots hmm. and projected myself behind the scenes, but I think I didn't really have any idea of what it took for people to put these things together. They seem to just be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, when I was young, or even now, mm -hmm. I always thought a curator, say a curator at the mm -hmm. Whitney Museum, what they did was they call for, if it's an ex of their, ex of, of their, what the, the work, artwork they own, mm -hmm. that it was actual hanging of the 
pieces in what order they got hung or where. Right. But then I noticed that with your kind of exhibits, you have a, an exhibit designer. What does that designer do? Well, we work very closely with the designers, and, yeah. and it's been our pleasure to work with people that I think are really talented, in, including mm -hmm. Constantine Boehm uh, and a f firm called Pure and Applied, who worked on the Spanish Civil War show with us, who I think really did a, a, a great job. And, and in, in a subject matter like that, it's particularly important that I think you have uh, talented Good. designers because so much of what you're dealing with is small and flat. Not all of it, but mm -hmm. a lot of it. And you're not dealing with great big objects. Mm -hmm. And so how do you give these small, flat uh, pieces of paper and photographs a kind of physical presence? Mm -hmm. Um, so we work closely uh, with, with them. them. And do and they are they designers <coughs> only for museums, or do they do other things? No, too? in, in many cases they do other exhibits things. Exhibits and but it's yeah. it. It's part of what too. it's a great job, and, <laughs> and part of what has made the people that we have worked with particularly great to work with um, is that they have taken a real interest in the editorial content, uh, and so we've spoken to them a lot about the subject matter, mm -hmm. and and so their design is not. Uh, done in isolation. They're right. trying to mm -hmm. communicate the spirit of the arguments right. and the, the narratives that Sarah and I are developing, mm -hmm. and it's, great. it's been great. Yeah, they really come together, the design and the content, yeah. uh, though we're always trying to be respectful of the different skills that we bring to the table, right. and so ultimately it's the curatorial intent, the interpretation that drives it, but a lot of things become design decisions because you can't yeah. um, you can't effectively communicate your ideas in a visual medium without uh, a really effective presentation. visual presentation. Right. And so in the best, in the best uh, cases, the designer becomes the enabler of the content. Mm -hmm. How do you decide, this is the final question <laughs> about curating and stuff, mm -hmm. how do you decide what, exhibition, what you want to exhibit or what you want to do? <laughs> the, the specific objects mm -hmm. in an exhibit? Mm -hmm. no, no, the general topic. The topic. How do you uh -huh. pick an well, and there's a variety of ways. Uh, there's a whole exhibition development process, and there's always many, many ideas on the table. Um, we talk about the appropriateness of the of the idea to the mission of the museum, mm -hmm. Mich Museum of the City of New York, yes, right, pretty broad. Right. Um, uh, a large part of bringing an exhibition from idea to reality has to do with the ability to secure funding, to find somebody who understands and gets it. They want to see the words and the things on the walls, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been very lucky to have wonderfully generous funders who understand the importance of to the public that. of presenting New York's story. It be a good exhibit about what, <laughs> what projects <laughs> result from funding. I mean, from yeah. all things. You talk about child care, anything, projects right. for the poor, aging, mm -hmm. this kind of thing. It all is well, revenue-driven. Um, well, it's, it's fine. Well, it's you fine. Have, you know, <laughs> I'm that's, not going to say what, it's, what makes things, it's what makes things possible. Yes. Uh, but it's not what, a, what right. uh, instigates in the first place. It's the no, idea right. that makes it important to start. Right. So let's talk mm -hmm. about this exhibit. Yeah. Where did this idea come mm -hmm. from? Well, the, um, we had a conversation with the Abraham Lincoln Brigade Archives about the fact that it's the, uh, the 70th anniversary of the Spanish Civil War now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> They're keenly aware of those years passing because the, the surviving... Yeah. The surviving veterans, uh, there's 41. 41. <laughs> they're in their 90s, uh, and that history is they're collecting very uh, voraciously to capture that history. Right. And so, 2007 is the 70th anniversary of the arrival of the Inter first international brigades in Spain. So that was the opportunity, uh, yeah, and for good. us, the the chance to tell this story was a, a way to turn the lens on New York as a global city. Mm -hmm. Really think about what it means to be a place where people come from all over the world to live, but then they don't just stay here and c pay attention to what's happening in New York. The consequence, <laughs> a consequence of being multicultural, multi-ethnic, yeah. is that we are engaged in the world in a different way than in another place. So right. it's a chance to look at New York's history. Right. And we don't always think of New York as an international city that right. way in terms of yeah. looking out, but, but one of the principal stories that we wanted to tell mm -hmm. was about the level of political engagement that was happening at well, that time. It's so interesting mm -hmm. because the government's official position was non-intervention. Right. So it was, this is, as you say, this was from the people up. Um, and it was people who disagreed with government policy, so it's so relevant to today. Right. And that's what's so interesting, and the difference between the right. activism or what, the ability to do it's, something. Well, in, in some ways, the, the government's official policy of non-intervention may have actually fueled the, this the development. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. <laughs> what, what happened? How did we do this? I mean, Spain was a republic. Right. In, in 
In 1936, was it? No, 30, uh, 31. In 31, 31. It, the, the uh, <laughs> monarchy is sent into exile. It becomes a democracy. It's actually the second Spanish Republic. There had been a, mm -hmm. a fleeting uh, experiment with democracy in the 19th century. Uh, but in 1931, a, a leftist government is democratically elected. Uh, and in 1933, uh, it, the pendulum swings to the right. In 1936, it swings back uh, towards a coalition government that included communists and anarchists, uh, but also a, a very broad range of uh, a political left mm -hmm. and known as the Popular Front. And uh, but by that point, the, the, the nation is so splintered that, of course, it, it does lead to civil war. Uh, it, it is an internal conflict, but it is also from the beginning widely seen in New York and elsewhere as an international, as having international ramification. And particularly because uh, the rebellion led by Franco is directly supported by Hitler and Mussolini. Right. And, and then the major Western democracies uh, adopt uh, policies of non-intervention. It is from the from the beginning seen as an international conflict. Was, was it apparent that Hitler and Mussolini were supporting Franco at the time that he first started this, the rebellion? Uh, from the very from the very second, I actually don't know when they when. Very soon, soon on, that would and, and, and yeah. one of the the mm -hmm. uh, objects that we have in the exhibit that I think is sort of particularly powerful is mm -hmm. a 1937 mm -hmm. uh, pamphlet written by uh, Garibaldi, in which he sa talks about the meaning of the Spanish Civil War, yeah. and he talks about Spain as a representative of the world mm -hmm. at the crossroads, and he very clearly frames the conflict mm -hmm. between Bolshevism, which he says is is supported by uh, the common turn, and also a uh, worldwide mm -hmm. uh, conspiracy of, of Jews. Uh, and, he, and he frames this in opposition uh, to the uh, principle of discipline, is what he yes. calls it. Mm -hmm. Order. And, so and, that, yeah, and, and yeah, order. Yeah. And, and they thought it would be a quick takeover, right? Absolutely. Franco, Franco, did, Franco thought yeah, it yeah. would be a matter of months. And it went on right. for three years and mm -hmm. claimed uh, the lives I mean, of anywhere between a half a million people. and a million people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Very bloody. And people in New York looked at this and they understood right away that this was a chance to take a stand against this international fascist. Uh, uh, these international fascist regimes. And one of the um, famous lines from the war that we quote in the exhibition uh, came from Af an African American who had, remember, Italy had invaded Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So in Harlem and in other yeah. African American neighborhoods, this yeah. was a cause celeb in New York. Right. And, uh, and so one of the volunteers who went to Spain said, It ain't Ethiopia, but it'll do. Because he had wanted to be able to fight again, to, to, in and defense of Ethiopia. Instead, he went to fight Mussolini Absolutely. in Spain. And New York mm. also was very, it was mm. a hot, I mean, it was seething, right, with well, political in <laughs> interest from the Depression. Mm. That's one of right. the very principal points mm -hmm. that right. we want to make yeah. in the exhibit is a portrait of a city in ferment, that it's right. suffering from the economic mm. deprivations of the mm. Depression, that mm. three quarters of the population are mm. immigrants or the children of immigrants, that many of them were brought up in, in leftist traditions in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, uh, there's a full spectrum of political belief mm -hmm. uh, that very much alive in New York. And we, and we wanted to uh, And a very that. strong labor movement at the time, yes. unions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And students and, and labor unions yeah. are, are among the first to support the republic. But also the Catholic Church uh, takes an official uh, stand of supporting Franco and uh, Pius XI uh, mm -hmm. sends yeah. fervent blessings. And so the, there is a strong support for mm -hmm. uh, Franco in New York as well. And that was one of the things that we felt hadn't been focused on previously right. mm -hmm. in that level of debate. And the split in all the different communities, the Italians right. Uh, right. split and everybody Right split. within, right. Yes. So there's a split within. It's not as if you can map these communities to one side or right. the other. Um, was there a split in the African-American community? Or uh, just was the split he, lack of interest? Yeah, I think the splits really uh, pertained in, in the Italian and German uh, yeah. ones, yeah. where there's, uh, to different degrees, appeals being made to right. have some loyalty to the, the fatherlands. Yeah. Uh, and some of the most fervent anti-Franco forces Father are... Father Coughlin? Well, on the, this, the, yeah, on the pro-Franco pro side. Franco, yes. uh, but but the, German, the German and Italian anti-fascists are incredibly committed and active. And then the, simultaneously within New York's German and Italian communities, there are those who are on the, on the pro-fascist side. Was this before Marc Antonio was old enough to be active? Well, his real career, I, I think, happened him after. In, in yeah. exhibit, so yeah. he's, he's comes LaGuardia, really in. The, Mayor LaGuardia mm -hmm. was 
somewhat involved, reluctantly yes. or well. well. <laughs> he, he, he made anti-Hitler statements very early on, but was yeah. reluctant uh, yeah. in, in terms of Mussolini. Mm -hmm. well, one of the mm -hmm. uh, objects that I think Sarah and I found particularly compelling mm -hmm. is a uh, ring. Oh, there right. were a, uh, an estimated 100,000 women in the Northeast of the United States, and including, of course, mm -hmm. New York, who had Italian-American women who sent in their gold wedding rings to Mussolini uh, to be melted down for armaments. And in exchange, uh, the Italian government sent, uh, Mussolini sent um, metal rings that inside are inscribed uh, Oro alla patria, gold for the fatherland and uh, for the, the country. And, uh, and one of those rings is, is in there? the exhibit. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was handed did, down. Did, are, did you, have you documented, or will you ever document, what happened, say, to the Italians who supported um, Mussolini and s supporting Franco, mm -hmm. and then what happened during the Second World War? What happened to that population? Did they stay sympathetic? To the Nazis, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I, I, I'm not think sure so? either. I, 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 think that's I never recall that. I don't think that ever happened. Yeah, it's an interesting I, question. Now, the the, the German it. situation's a little different. I'd say that what we found in looking at this period in New York history is that um, German Americans lay a lot lower in this period mm -hmm. with respect to Hitler than right. the Italians did with Mussolini. That's interesting. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of reasons, I think. Uh, one of which is that they had emerged from the experience of World War I, right. where they had been, uh, you know, they renamed sauerkraut liberty cabbage, and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and you couldn't play uh, it's Beethoven. Like the French fries, you, whatever you right. call it. Right, 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 right. You couldn't play Beethoven, you know, you couldn't perform Beethoven. Uh, and so they were very cautious about taking any kind of stand yeah. about your, and, and, and they were very anxious to, to proclaim, proclaim their loyalty to the United States. Um, Italians, on the other hand, um, Mussolini actively appealed to the Italians in the diaspora mm -hmm. to support the, his program. He, and the, mm -hmm. this example of sending gold yes, for the fatherland is one, is one of those. So uh, you see, there certainly are Germans, there's the, the German-American Bund, which has this mm -hmm. fascist movement going in New York, but it's... New York film, we always grew up this, with saying, be careful over the, there. The right. Bund, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's sort of, it's different. It's not entirely symmetrical when you think right. about how the Germans and the Italians who are living in New York respond to the events of the 1930s. So there mm. were, they, mm. they talked about, I mean, in the exhibit, mm. you, you see all the mm. intellectuals and the entertainers and things mm. really mm. galvanizing and fundraising. And there was fundraising all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, but was there a lot of action directed at the president also? And yes. The Congress. Yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. And there was very strong movements to lift right. the embargo. There's right. a series of neutrality acts starting mm -hmm. in 1935, mm -hmm. and then there's the embargo act, which specifically forbids selling arms to either side uh, of the Spanish conflict, and, and that becomes a focus. And it, it is uh, estimated that at, at the outset of the war, most Americans uh, s s supported staying that the a policy of non-intervention and not selling arms. But that towards the end of the war, uh, over 70 percent are estimated mm -hmm. to have supported not sending troops, but sending arms to the republic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, uh, and so there was a big popular movement mm -hmm. to pressure Congress to lift the embargo. Right. And uh -huh. actually, Dorothy Parker is one of the celebrities yes, right. who becomes very involved <laughs> in raising money, principally for Spanish children, for mm -hmm. relief aid to the mm -hmm. children. And she runs uh, <laughs> two uh, fairs, country fairs in uh, Greenwich Village on the theme of country <laughs> fair to raise money. And actually, the New York Times commented on how odd it was to see a cow being milked in the shadow of the Washington Square <laughs> arch in the village. And uh, among the celebrities that she gets involved are, uh, is Gypsy Rose Lee, who <laughs> says to the audience, you might think that I'm thinking about lifting my skirts, but I'm actually thinking about lifting me in bar. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Did, um, th th there are a lot of artif a lot of material there. Mm -hmm. There are actual items. Mm -hmm. There are historical documents. Mm -hmm. There are letters, personal mm -hmm. letters, yes. photographs. Mm -hmm. There's a movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, did you find any original things, or did they come from the archives? How do you do that? We did. Okay, so we did uh, both of those. The Abraham Lincoln Brigade Archives is housed at the Tamament Library at NYU, mm -hmm. and they were partners with us. So they have a tremendous resource there, and a lot of the material is in their archives. But in addition, we reached out to people, to, people, to uh, families of the uh, of veterans, uh -huh. uh, but also, like for example, that uh, the ring mm -hmm. came from a yep, still in private ha hands. Oh, this is interesting. Right. Um, how do you we find have, it's like we, a it's like a it's a little treasure hunt and a network, hunt, a yeah, a network yeah, yeah and uh, and and then people came forth as the news of the exhibition spread we put notices out and people came forward and told us what they had and then there were other institutional collections some of the Columbia art the great artwork 
in, that's in the show mm. is from are from museums mm -hmm. and There's Columbia artwork University. artwork and there are cartoons and political cartoons and all kinds of the things. political cartoon what was what I had in mind in one case was uh, which was the family of um, a cartoonist who who drew for uh, a Spanish language paper approached us here and set here here oh. they had his their father's work oh, not so the great. original drawings yeah. sadly but the clippings oh that's so great and it's somebody whose work is not known but he drew and drew and drew yeah, on the topic yeah. of spanish civil war the, the the lincoln brigade was an american brigade mm -hmm. but there were how many other there were brigades from all over the world right? yes absolutely there are over 50 countries represented <laughs> in the international brigades and the american link uh, the abraham lincoln brigade is named specifically for abraham lincoln because he was the leader of a democratically elected government where there was an internal oh, yeah. uh, yeah. military rebellion. Right. So and they were also proclaiming, proclaiming their American yeah. identity. Yeah. They were sensitive on the idea of, them, of being seen as yeah. somehow not un American. A lot of them were mm -hmm. co communists. Uh, the Communist Party was very active in recruiting and yeah. forming this. And uh, it was in the period of the Popular Front when the Communist uh -huh. Party was declaring, American Communist Party was said, communism is 20th century Americanism. And they were really emphasizing this American heritage. Very, but it was, very was, it was a combination of everything. But then the people who really wanted to attack it then mm -hmm. concentrate on the communists, right? And then mm -hmm. that takes us into the Cold War <laughs> or McCarthy and the other House on American Activities. Well, well, we'll there, come there, to that there, in a minute. complicated there, story. There, yeah. there are all sorts of conflicts yeah. that are going on yeah. in New York that we wanted to, to highlight. Yeah. And, and among, among them, I would say that the principal paradigm for viewing the, the uh, war in Spain at the time was in terms of fascism and democracy. But there were also other points of view. There's a 1936 cartoon <laughs> from uh, the Evening Sun which uh, depicts two roosters fighting and they represent the, the uh, right and the left within Spain and but they're being watched by a fox who's identified as um, <laughs> Moscow Reds and he's ready to pounce on both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. There is that point oh, of view. Yeah. There was an anarchist publication mm -hmm. called The Vanguard uh, that in 1937 uh, has a cover story about uh, th they are both anti-fascist and anti-communist, and they, they want Spain neither for Franco nor for Stalin. So there is mm -hmm. debate going on within the left in New York that we wanted to illuminate at the same time that the, the larger framework at the time was principally in terms of fascism and democracy. Mm -hmm. Do you, com if you, if, how many people in the Lincoln Brigade? About 3,000? All together, yes, and we to. uh, uh, roughly 1,000 came from New York, were New Yorkers, virtually all of them, not every one, but most of them pass through New York to ship out. And not a lot of everyone. fatalities. Yes, it's estimated that a third of the New Yorkers who went to Spain did not return. Yeah. It's very high. Yeah. Now, when you do this, is this book done in re in connection with you, or is this a separate project? It's a related project. It's related. It's a related. It's not. It's, it's not a catalog of the exhibition. Right. But it it's has newly commissioned essays uh, yeah, that relate to the. Commissioned essays. And do you mm -hmm. guys decide what essays you want? Well, in this or case, it's become a separate kind of thing, or what? <laughs> it w was done in collaboration. Uh, we had an editor, uh, two editors, Peter Carroll and James Fernandez, mm -hmm. who who Did really present, who present, uh, put together the book and in in so collaboration with the museum. So the exhibition is in collaboration with several other groups. So tell me, Abraham Lincoln Brigade Archives, uh -huh. the Tama Mint Library uh -huh. where they're housed, and Instituto Cervantes, okay. which is the uh, Spanish right. cultural. Organization. And actually, New, New York is just sort of endlessly fascinating, I think, to both of us in, in all sorts of ways, not the least of which is what's here physically in libraries and archives is really staggering, you know, that, that, that this collection at NYU, we really couldn't have done the exhibit without them. At, at the same time, there are over 50... Uh, collect from all over. Huh? Yeah, there, 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 there are over 50 lenders. lenders to the exhibit, and we found things all over the place. And the fact that this stuff is in New York is just... And, and that so much of it is publicly accessible. And it, once you think about it, it's endless. I mean, I would think immediate comes to mind. I want to follow every old person to their house and say, "What do right. you have in the right. closets and or we in went, the attic?" And we, we went to we old people's houses. Yes. Old. <laughs> yes. And, and one, of, one of the things that I think Sarah and I try to illuminate in the show is what actually motivates someone to get that politically involved, particularly right. in mm -hmm. a conflict that's happening 3,000 miles and away. And let's do it now. Yeah. Relate it to today. Mm -hmm. Was it more active then than New York City is now, as far as as the war in Iraq goes? Do you think? It was oh. ubiquitous, I have to say, in the 1930s. Uh, whichever side you were on, you really couldn't avoid Spain as an mm -hmm. issue. It really was uh, a lead topic in political in, conversation. In that way, it may in our time have been more parallel to Vietnam, which was, yeah. was, was just everywhere and, mm -hmm. and on the news constantly right. and in schools mm -hmm. and, and the workplace. People mm -hmm. were, it was just And here odd. the anger is more directed to the president, mm -hmm. isn't it? It seems to me. 
now, oh, now, 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 rather. I don't know. Mm, yeah. But it's certainly an interesting concept. I mean, it's, it, it is. It's just and think it's about those history. thousand New Yorkers uh, taking that ultimate move and right. getting on that ship. And uh, remember, it was against the law for uh, them to so go. So what happened to them? It was against the law. So what happened to them? There's ama it's amazing stories, actually. We have the, about a the, minute. This, oh. <laughs> uh, they had to sneak out, essentially. And then yeah. they had to go to France and who had and closed their border. In. They had to close the, board, <laughs> had closed the border. They and walked they across the walked Pyrenees. At night. They well, but and one how did New they Yorker, get back into the country? They just came from France, then. It was all right. mean, back into... Into the United they States. They had crossed yeah. back to France, yeah. Yeah, and for the most coming, part. Yeah. Yeah. One of our favorite yeah. objects in the exhibit is a postcard from a man named Harry Meloff who did not return, a New Yorker who did not yeah. return. And it's a, a picture of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, but on the back he's written uh, to a friend, had to leave town in a hurry, <laughs> understand? And of course the right. person who and received the card that. did yes. understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because so he couldn't he say was. where, where yeah. he was or why he was. Well, he yeah. said he was in Paris, but not why. And he said he they didn't hear from them later. And then the survivors who mm -hmm. came back, mm -hmm. They were really uh, followed, weren't they, by the House on American Activities Committee mm -hmm. and people who were really witch hunting then? Mm -hmm. No? Yes? So, so some yeah, were, were, were involved in it, had that they kind of They continued their activism, and right. that's what happened. And, they became, and the, the organizations that had uh, organized for Spain and for the Spanish refugees were listed among the organizations that were considered to be. Now, suspect. how long is this exhibit going to be on? <laughs> it's up till April, uh, to August, August. August 12th. Yeah, August 12th. So I hope that people get to come. I see yes, it. I, I hope so. so. And, can and we have a lot of programs coming up that people should And they should go about. to your website. www.mcny.org. Is it too late for me to become a curator? Because it sounds like <laughs> a never fascinating too late. life. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very envious of you. And thank you very much for coming. Thank oh, you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> thank it's you. a pleasure. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.